You see it happen every single off season. You even see it during the actual college football season. Is the transfer portal a good thing for college football based on what we've seen in recent years? Or is it bad and possibly affecting the sport in negative ways? Let's talk about it right after the intro. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? Christian Ballard here with Ballard Sports Media coming at you with a quick video. Interesting topic that I thought about. Do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I do all kinds of uh, sports talk, especially college football. As this year is coming to a close, though, we get into 2022. Uh, Want to definitely get into some baseball, some basketball with March Madness. Uh, we just got a lot going on with all these bowl games and, and, and playoffs and everything. And plus, I'm just a huge football fan uh, more than anything else. But hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. I really would appreciate it. Love each and every one of you out there. We're on the road to 500 subscribers. We're also going to be celebrating two years on the channel tomorrow as I'm recording this on December 8th. Tomorrow, December 9th. Catch me live. It'll probably be, I was going to do 10 Eastern, but I'm going out to dinner. It's probably going to be a little later. I don't know. Whenever I get home from dinner, I'll I'll hit the stream yard up. If I'm late, I apologize, but we're going to get it in tomorrow night. I got school during the day. I got some stuff to take care of uh, after school, and then I'm going out to dinner. So, I mean, the best time. Plus, I mean, that's when everyone's going to hop on anyway. But getting to the topic of con. Conversation. First off, I'll say happy holidays uh, to everyone out there. Merry Christmas. Um, you know, I mean, the transfer portal, is it good or bad? I think it's both good and bad. So I come up with this list here. Um, and again, if, you know, you guys think of anything that maybe I didn't point out, let me know. Um but I'm going to look at something from Athlon Sports. But before I do that, I want to share <clears throat> the – I want to share with you guys what I have, uh, if I can. I hope so. Let me see. Um, I want to share what I have listed. Um, I, I know I can share windows, but I can't share. Oh, here we go. Notepad. Okay. If you guys can see this real quick, let me zoom in and I can zoom in on the text too. Uh, uh I, I had a couple things written down. It, it's really not a whole lot you can say, but the transfer portal is the best and the worst thing to happen for college football. Um, and I don't know if I want to say college football as a whole, but there's some teams obviously that benefit and some teams that don't. I think it's good because the players, you know, can leave and go to a better school that could fit their skill set. Uh, I mean, systematic quarterbacks and other, you know, different positions. Uh, I mean, you see it all the time. Um, I'll admit maybe Mac Jones was systematic. Maybe what Steve Sarkeesian had last year is the perfect fit for him. And now you're seeing the same kind of set uh, for him with Bill Belichick and the Patriots. He didn't transfer – but just to the, kind of give an example of like a systematic uh, <clears throat> quarterback or systematic player, um, you know, you see transfers all the time. You know, players can leave to go to a better school that could fit their skill set, um, you know, whether their defense, you know, maybe, you know, connections uh, too. I mean, some coaches out there in college football have certain relationships and and connections with players, you know, knew them, you know, maybe watching them in high school or tried to recruit them, but they didn't end up going there or, you know, whatever. So they, you know, I don't know, stay in touch and they say, I'm going to transfer because I want to play for this person. So it's good for the players. They can leave and go to a better school that could fit their skill set. And you could also look at, I mean, there are, not even just second string. Sometimes there's even third string players that should should be on the field, should start, should play, that just don't. Um, you see it happen all the time. 
I mean, like Alabama and Georgia, we keep talking about them, talking about them, even teams like Oklahoma. It's so, like, it is funny, um, you know, with, with how they recruit. Like Alabama's wide receiver room the next few years is going to be loaded. And you're going to have guys leave every year, but you're also – I mean, there's some key freshmen that have stepped up this year a little bit. Uh, watch a guy like Ja'Cory Brooks. He had a, a a great game against Auburn. I think he caught the uh, uh, the two-point conversion, if I'm not mistaken, unless it was Jamison Williams. But, uh, you know, a key guy like him. Uh, Christian Leary's a key guy for Alabama. You know, I, I could go on and on down the list, and Georgia's got players too, but you have all these freshmen, and you're loaded. And sometimes, I mean, yeah, even teams like Alabama could get three-star receivers. Georgia can get – it's not all five-star. It's not all, you know, whatever. But, you know, Jaco- Kobe Boykins, Ja'Cory Brooks, JoJo Earl, Ajay Hall, uh, Thio Jones Bell, to name a few receivers. Let's look at receivers because I mean, uh, Alabama is loaded there, right? Um, not all of those guys. Plus, you also, I would take into account some guys coming back next year, um, you know, like a, a, a Thio Jones Bell, he might step up because you might have a guy like Jamison Williams leave. John Mechie's out for the season. Does he come back? Well, that's already filling an extra spot. So somebody out there that maybe we thought would step up probably won't. That is if John Mechie returns. He's out for the season. I don't know what he's going to do. I think he's made a good case to go to the NFL regardless of, uh, of um, you know, injury or whatever. I mean, he's going to be good. He's going to go top 15, maybe top 20 somewhere in the draft. Um, but you have all of these receivers and even tight ends at Alabama, and I see it all the time with, with Georgia too. Um, there's just so much like this is at the NFL where you can only have 53 guys. You take what you can get in recruiting, um, and you just load up, but there's so many freshmen and sophomores and maybe even juniors that are going to come back next year for these teams out there. Not even just Alabama. This is all a college football and you're going to see players in the off season transfer. You're going to see some guys transfer out, uh, at the beginning of next season in 2020. Two, I almost said 2021, we're still in that, uh, but New Year coming up, obviously. But, you know, again, it's good um, because players can leave to go to a better school that could better fit their skill set. That's another thing. I mean, some guys start out um, and maybe don't have the best performance and they think they could do better somewhere else. So they go play, you know, they go from like a, a Clemson to – Pitt or something. I, I don't know. I, I'm just throwing team names out there or vice versa, Pitt to Clemson. I don't know. Right. Um, so it, it's good for the players. They can leave to go to a better school that could better fit their skill set. I mean, we talk about systematic quarterbacks all the time. You know, we also talk about generational quarterbacks. I've mentioned Mac Jones. Uh, there's different positions too: receiver, offensive linemen, even kickers. Uh, Joseph Bullivis from Alabama, I think, transferred to Vanderbilt because Will Reichard um, and Bullivis was not a good kicker for us, uh, period. But I don't know. Maybe he's doing pretty good. I, I, th- I thought I saw he hit like a 40-something yarder for Vandy somewhere this year. So maybe whatever special teams is going on over there, whatever they got, that's helping him out. I mean, look, these players – you know, they're either transferring for, at least in my mind, one of two reasons, right? Number one, they want to start and they're not going to get a chance to start and they should be starting. So they're going to leave to go somewhere where they can start. Or number two, maybe they are starting or maybe even if they're not, um, it just doesn't seem like the best place And it doesn't seem like this school is helping them out to be the best college player and college athlete that they can be. So they go to a different, um, you know, they go to a different school, you know. Um, I mean, let's say, you know, like here's an example. Good because, okay, for coaches, if you lose a key player, he flips on signing day, you could potentially grab a transfer to take their place. You didn't get the five-star corner that you want, go pick up this five-star maybe second string um, that a team 
you know, let go of, you know, <coughs> like, let's say, I don't, again, just pick any team. A team wanted a five-star safety or a corner, a five-star defensive back, but he flipped last second, so you didn't get him. Okay, no big deal, right? Well, you still want to fill that role. You just lost a few key corners. You needed to recruit uh, a few of them this year. You didn't quite do that. So, um, I mean, look, it's, you know, go to the transfer portal. It benefits coaches. It also benefits players. But at the same time, first off, does it hurt players? I know it hurts coaches, and I know it hurts teams and, and, and programs because you're losing all this talent that you worked hard to, to talk and meet with these players and recruit them, get them on campus, get them all worked up in practice. Everything that you've done, and, and some coaches out there even just don't give a, you know, rip. <laughs> they don't give a crap. They don't invest in their players all that much. There's some coaches out there, Dan Mullen. Um, you know, but it sucks to lose a player. You know, like I, I, the one thing that sticks out to me, and I'm not even just saying it because I'm an Alabama fan. Let's be honest. We were all watching Jalen Hurts. We knew what he did for Alabama. And you can say whatever you want. Yeah, two was a better passing quarterback. Fine. We needed to throw the football against Georgia in that game. Tua went in, he did it, and it changed the offense in a very positive way. And I even have said on occasion, like, it's not that we shouldn't have started Tua, but I don't know that Jalen deserved to be put on the bench, but someone's got to be out there, right? Jalen Hurts, first off, you applaud the man for staying an extra year, coming in the Georgia game the year after in the SEC title, and, and kind of proving himself there. But then he transfers out. I was heartbroken. I was crushed. Nick Saban was emotional. I, I mean, Bama fans, the team, nobody wanted him to leave. And I don't think it was one of those – like, I don't even think Jalen wanted to leave Alabama. But he knew that if he wanted to be the best quarterback he could be and get to where he is right now in the NFL, uh, you know, he would need to start. So he saw that Tua was just going to be the starter and he had to move on. So he went to Oklahoma. It, it was a bad thing for Alabama, but it's a good thing if you're Lincoln Riley. You've been getting all these different transfer quarterbacks, and, you know, they had let go of Kyler Murray. He goes to the draft. Um, I think Spencer Rattler came in, which we've seen what he did this year before Caleb Williams had to come in. I'm not too I, – I don't really like Spencer Rattler all that much. I don't think that he was working out too good at Oklahoma, uh, really, in, in my opinion. But, you, anyway, Oklahoma got him in. But, you know, I think even Lincoln Riley just didn't know if he wanted to go with that. So what does Jalen Hurts do? He transfers to Oklahoma. Well, he leads Oklahoma to the CFP to play LSU. And, I mean, they lost the game big time. We know about LSU. But, you know, it benefited him. He was a Heisman finalist. He probably should have won. You know, he, he led Alabama – to two straight national titles, probably th two and a half. I'll, I'll give partial credit to him for getting us to the, the Clemson game in 2018, 2019, just for winning the SEC for us. But, you know, um, but ultimately, anyway, he, he transferred out, and it was bad because Alabama lost a key star on offense. Even though they had to, uh, they lost someone that – ultimately was, I mean, still doing good, and he was still playing enough time when he was back in Tua up. Um, so, I mean, but it was good for him because he went to a better position, better place to show his talent, and, um, you know, um, it, it worked out for him. He was a Heisman finalist. He was taken in the second round by, by the Eagles. He's looking good with the Eagles right now. So, I mean, yeah. But anyway, overall, I, I want to hear from you guys in the comments. I'm not going to be on here too long with it, but this is a good topic of conversation. Is the transfer portal the best or the worst thing to happen for college football? I guess it depends on your point of view. Um, if you're a player, um, 
you know, it, it's good because you can go somewhere. Well, actually, okay. Players, some players probably don't want to leave a certain school, but they have to, right? It's the only way they're going to reach their potential. And it ends up working, working out well for, for quite a few of them. So maybe it's good for the players, but for a coaching standpoint, someone's getting the good side of the stick. The other one's getting the raw end of the stick and it's broken and all tore up because you just lost a player you didn't want to lose, right? Um, so, I mean, there's pros and cons on it. Do I personally think the transfer portal is great? From my point of view, yeah. I mean, look, players deserve to go and play and show their talent. I don't care – if they're a walk-on, I don't care if they're three-star, four-star, five-star, maybe even one-star. I don't care what player it is. If they're out of high school and they have a passion for football, regardless of star rating, you know, like a, a two-star linebacker isn't going to start at Alabama. That's not how things work, right? Um, but he could leave and go play at, like, Connecticut or UConn or, I, 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 you know, Hawaii or something. I don't know. And he'll have his opportunity. Maybe he goes to Division II football, works his way up and works out great there, gets better. You know, players can use the transfer portal to ultimately um, go somewhere where they will best fit to, to reach their potential as a football player overall. So I really don't have any much else uh, – to talk about as far as the transfer portal, I, I, you know, again, overall, I think it's a good thing. Uh, but also, you got to look at it from a, a point of view. I mean, I even I mentioned Jalen Hurts. Uh, what about what about Clemson and Kelly Bryant? You know, Kelly Bryant was was uh, over. I, I don't know if I want to say he was great, but like, let's Trevor Lawrence should have taken the starting job from him. We know what happened. They went on 15-0. Trevor Lawrence wins as a freshman. But Kelly Bryant, Dabo didn't want to let him go. He lost a player. He's very upset that his player left. But he did what he had to do for the team, so he started the better player. Um, you know, but it – I mean, I don't, I don't even think Kelly Bryant did all that great at Mizzou anyway. Uh, I mean, I really don't. But, you know, still, at least for an emotional standpoint, Dabo uh, – of course, crying, um, you know, uh, he was hurt and he was heartbroken when Kelly Bryant had to leave out. I mean, you think that coaches just look at players leave and and say that it's no big deal? I mean, no. I mean, coaches like Dabo, Kirby Smart, I'm sure, if he ever has a guy transfer out, uh, Nick Saban, I mean, these guys are all about players, all about commitment to organization and the team and – just like a community of of players, like they want this family type of atmosphere in their program, um, and you know to see guys go, it sucks. I mean, you can't play every single player on the field all at one time. You just can't. Like twelve man set, right? Uh, especially on defense, but or eleven players. You can't have twelve men on the field, Alabama. Um, but. You know, I think the transfer portal has its ups and downs. It has its pros and cons. Overall, I'll say that it's good for college football. Um, I, I, I really don't see much how it's bad other than you got to look at it from what point of view. I mean, is it the coach losing a player he didn't want to lose? And, 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 you know, I mean, obviously the coaches, if they're right in their mind, they support the decision, but it hurts you, you know. Um, but it's not about college football is not about the coaches. It's about the players. We don't watch it. Like, I, I mean, I love Nick Saban. Don't get me wrong. We know what he's done in Alabama. We're all tied all the way, but I want to watch the players. I, I'm watching, I'm pulling for the players. I'm not pulling necessarily for Saban. Like, come on, Saban, clap. Come on, throw your headset on the ground. I, I know I'm saying O-line block, get that pick Jordan battle. Throw the touchdown, Bryce Young. Mechie, make that catch. Run the ball. Run the ball. You know, we're pulling for the players. That's what it's always been about in college football. That's what it's supposed to be about. That's what it is about. And, you know, if, if players leave your program 
because you didn't start them. Well, tough crap. They just some players out there deserve to be starting, but aren't because there's someone. I mean, there's always going to be someone better than you, and you just have to start the better players. You know, if a player's not starting, it doesn't mean he doesn't have talent. It just means that there's someone ahead of him that's just a little bit better. So the second, third, fourth string, whatever it is, is going to transfer out. And that's a bad thing for that program to lose that kind of player, but it's good for that player that's transferring to go to a different program where he can reach his potential, get ready for the NFL, start, and ultimately be a professional and and great NFL player someday, make a lot of money. So, I mean, overall, I'll end it on this note. The transfer portal has its ups and downs. It has its pros and cons. And overall, I'm going to say it's a good thing. Uh, But is it hurting college football in ways? Honestly, the transfer portal drama is kind of funny sometimes, and and it's kind of – it's interesting. It's intriguing. I don't know. This whole – the transfer portal is killing college football. I don't know how it is. I think I, unless someone clear it up with me, is it the eligibility rule? Is it the, oh, well, they don't get immediate eligibility or whatever? I don't know. But again, you guys, I'm, I'm going to end it right here. You guys comment down below what you think. Is the transfer portal a good thing? Should we get rid of it? How, how would you handle this if a player wants to transfer out? Is the system of transferring and how we have it set up is that right? Is the eligibility rule okay? Is the portal, is the waivers, is the NCAA has to sign off or whatever? Like, is it set up in the right way? And would you also hear from you guys? Would you agree with what I said about it, like benefiting the players, but also kind of killing the coaches a bit because of the talent that they're losing? I want to hear from you guys. I'm going to end it on that note. I love you guys. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. I'm going to be saying it all month long. It's the best month of the year, best time of the year. Hey, don't forget Thursday night, Thursday night, my birthday, celebrating two years on the channel. I wanted to do 10 Eastern, which I'll probably still do that. But again, if I'm late because I'm out to dinner, just bear with me. I apologize. But I'm going to do it. I at least have it scheduled just so it's up there and ready to go. But whenever I get home from uh, dinner uh, tomorrow night, uh, hit it. Let's go live. Let's let's talk about two years of Ballard Sports Media. And again, I can't thank y'all enough for all the love and the support. Y'all mean a lot to me. I love each and every one of you. You know who you are. Jesus loves you too. Keep your head up. Happy holidays. Have an amazing rest of your week. God bless. And as always, from an Alabama fan, folks, roll tide roll. Love y'all. Peace out. Bye.